A common question people ask when looking to live the bus life or van life is how can I wire my own solar system when I'm not an electrician? Today I wanted to share with you guys some tips and tricks on how I wired my solar system, how it's set up, and how you can do it yourself. Welcome back to my channel everybody and to the second episode of Thoughts from the Road. Today I want to talk to you guys about solar power and how you guys can put your own solar system on your bus or van. I know that one of the biggest barriers to entry of people looking to get into the off-grid lifestyle is wiring a solar system. It can be really difficult for me and you not being electricians to figure out how exactly you can wire a solar system, what components you actually need, and how you can actually create a system that's going to fit your lifestyle. So today I want to talk to you guys about the system that I wired into my bus, how that system works for me, and how you guys might be able to improve on what I've done to fit your lifestyle even better. So so stick around. So I've been off grid for the last 11 months and what I mean by that is that I haven't necessarily needed to ever plug into a house, campground, or any other type of on-grid system. I've been self-sustaining on my solar power, my alternator connection, and my generator for the last 11 months where I'm able to get enough power into my batteries to fully function on this school bus. Now that doesn't mean that I can't make improvements upon the systems that I have. It does mean that I'm able to meet all my power needs including my refrigerator, my computers, my cameras, my cell phones on the system that I currently have. So you might be asking, well then what system are you running on your bus? I am currently running a kit system because when I first started this build, I didn't know anything about solar and I felt that the best option for me was not to just go buy a bunch of random components, but rather try to find a company that would actually have the whole system put together in which I can just wire myself and learn the components as I went. These components are interchangeable, so I can add or change or upgrade as I went into my system, but I figured I might want to show you guys exactly what components I have and give you guys a schematic, so here we go. Now this is the schematic of my solar system. I have 360 watt panels over here, which power into a 30 amp charge controller. What a charge controller does is simply regulates the voltage between the batteries and the solar panels, and also makes sure that the batteries don't overcharge during charging. So over here I have my four batteries. These four batteries are six volt deep cell AGM batteries. You can choose different batteries if you want, but that's just simply what I went with. These batteries are running 225 amp hours each, so I have four batteries running six volt at 225 amp hours. These batteries are run in series parallel, which means if you notice, it's positive, positive, negative, negative, which means the batteries are actually switched here. What that does is that gives me two batteries running 12 volt at 225 amp hours. These batteries together then output 12 volts at 450 amp hours. So when it comes out of the batteries, you have 12 volt at 450 amp hours. What this is gonna do is it's gonna go through my inverter system. Once it goes to the inverter system, I will have 120 volts at 45 amp hours, give or take a loss for efficiency coming out of the inverter. Also coming out of the batteries is I have my 12 volt panel, which is wired directly out of the batteries. This panel then goes through a fuse box and into my 12 volt system into the rest of the school bus. I'm not necessarily gonna go into my transfer switch but I didn't draw in or necessarily how the battery charger works because I'm really focused more in this video about this part of the whole system and trying to explain how solar systems actually work. After looking at this schematic, you guys can see that it can be very confusing when trying to wire a solar system. And the way that I did it is not necessarily the only way that you can do it. My battery setup with being six volts and a 12 volts is only one way to do it. I've also seen people run it in just 12 volt. You can also run 12 volt and series parallel into 24 volts. There's a lot of different ways you can do it, it just really matters what your needs are. So what I simply wanted to show you guys was how I wired my system so that you can get a better idea of the different components that go into a solar system and what you might need to consider for your own system. So what I wanted to tell you guys next is exactly what that solar system actually powers, just to give you an idea of what does 450 amp hours in 12 volt actually do. So on my bus, I have a 120 fridge, a 120 stereo system. The lighting that you currently see is actually 120 at the moment, even though they are running LED bulbs. And I also have 120 outlets throughout the bus, which power my cell phone, my computer, and a lot of other electronics, just like you would in your residential house. So if I really wasn't caring about using power and I just kind of ran my system out, it would probably die in about a day or a day and a half if I had absolutely no sun or no input into my system. Now that's kind of an issue because I live off grid and I really don't want to be running out of power all the time. So I do live a little bit differently with my lifestyle where I don't always have things on. I run the fridge on an eight hour cycle. I don't really use these lights often unless I'm actually filming or it's really late at night and I just want a really good lighting. I also don't want to run the stereo system very often. I usually use a Bluetooth speaker. These are all lifestyle choices that are going to change if you choose to go off grid because you can't necessarily just run everything all the time unless you have a massive system system. And a massive system is going to mean a massive amount of money. So what I want to do is give you guys some suggestions about how I've supplemented 
my solar power and just give myself that little extra boost to be able to run a little bit more efficiently. So the main way that I've chosen to do this is by doing an alternator battery connection. What that simply means is that I'm connecting my main batteries to my vehicle, to my auxiliary batteries or my solar batteries. By doing this while the engine is running, my alternator is able to send power back through my main battery to my auxiliary batteries and actually charge them while driving. This happens because the alternator, when it turns on, charges your main battery, but after a while, doesn't actually charge the battery anymore, but rather just runs the systems in your vehicle. So what you can do is actually connect your main battery to your auxiliary batteries and actually use the alternator as a charging mechanism while you're driving. So I'm gonna take you guys back to the schematic that I showed you on the solar system and how you can add an alternator connection into that existing schematic to just help you understand how you can do it yourself. So if you're looking to add a battery alternator connection in your off-grid system, all you need to do is add these three components right here. It's simply just two fuses and one battery isolator. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow your alternator to send extra power once it charges this main battery all the way through to your auxiliary batteries and act as a triple charge. The most important thing about this is this component right here, the battery isolator. What the isolator is gonna do is it's gonna disallow this battery and this battery from connecting in voltage when the vehicle's not on. So if you were to drain your entire solar batteries over here, it would not charge back and drain your vehicle batteries so you won't wake up in the morning with a dead battery. Vice versa, if this battery is completely drained, it will not drain all the way back into these batteries unless the ignition is on and this isolator is activated. This is prevented because the battery isolator is wired into the ignition of the vehicle, which means this isolator will only be activated when the vehicle's on and the alternator will be running. This can be a really effective way to add an extra boost into your solar system and also save you a bit of money on extra solar panels and save you an extra bit of money on some extra batteries. So I hope looking at that schematic was useful to you and it gave you a good idea of how you might be able to add a battery alternator connection into your existing or future system. After going through all these schematics and information, it can be very confusing to you to understand or wrap your mind around all the different components and different options there are with solar or even just off-grid lifestyle and power. I hope that this video just gave you a clear understanding of what I've done on my bus and how I've powered the system and lifestyle that I'm living. Now, I really wanna make sure you know that it's not necessarily important to have the biggest system out there or to just go crazy with solar and batteries because when you do that, you're also gonna be spending a lot of money. A lot of times you can go with a smaller system and just simplify your needs and be able to get away with a lot less. Going off grid isn't necessarily about living the same lifestyle in your residential home or lifestyle you currently have. There are gonna be some adjustments that go into living on an off grid lifestyle and using solar as your main power source. And that's something just to consider. So you're not gonna necessarily be able to run a hair dryer or an air conditioner, but that's just something that comes with a change of lifestyle. I hope that all this information was useful to you and that all the parts and components I used are gonna be linked in the description below. So feel free to go down and check them out so you can see exactly what I use and exactly what these components look like. So if you guys are interested in bus life, van life, or road life, consider subscribing to this channel because I'm going to be sharing a lot more information just like this. I'm also going to be sharing a lot more information about my adventures in daily life. So once again, thanks for sticking around and I'll see you guys next time.